like good form. And now it's time for something a little different from the value bike field test here in Tucson, Arizona. This is the $1,589 Marin Team Marin 1. Moving past the questionable name, it's easy to see that this silver bike is a little more cross-country focused than some of the other hardtail contenders that we have here. To be clear though, Marin says that it has XC light and trail riding capability. The Team Marin 1 gets less travel and a steeper head angle than the other three hardtails at this field test with a 120 millimeter travel Judy TK Silver Fork and a 67 degree head angle that both say cross country more than trail bike. That said, Marin has spec'd a relatively short 35 millimeter stem and 780 millimeter wide handlebar, which is great to see on a bike like this. All right, so those are the details for the Marin Team Marin 1. It's time to talk about how this bike performs on the trail. And right off the bat, this thing looks like far more of a cross country bike than the other hardtails that we have here. So right away, I'm assuming that it climbs like a rocket ship. Kaz, is that the case? Yeah, I'd say it's a fair assessment. It's a modern cross country bike. So you might have preconceptions of, you know, sketchy handling. It doesn't really have that 67 degree head angle. So it's steeper than some of the bikes here, but it's not like in the old days we used to have 69 degrees was kind of your go-to for an XC bike. So this one's modern geometry, but it still has that feel. It wants to accelerate quick, quick handling. So definitely a climber's bike. I wanna ask about the position that the bike puts you in as well. You mentioned it there that it's a little bit steeper. It's got a 120 millimeter fork. It does have a short stem and a really wide handlebar though. So position wise, when I get on a cross country bike, a cross country bike like tells me to pedal hard, you know? Is that what you feel when you get on this thing? Yeah, you still feel that. I mean, it is a flat bar. There's no rise to that bar at all. Yeah. It doesn't even really have much back sweep, but I think some riders, even myself, I would actually go with a little bit longer stem mm -hmm. just because you have a wide bar and such a short stem. Who is this guy? Longer I know, it's crazy. <laughs> Next <laughs> but, thing you know, you're gonna be wanting cable disc brakes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it is, you know, it's a cross country bike. So you do want a little bit more um, kind of open position and the handling gets so fast because you have that steeper head angle and we have a short stem, wide bars, the leverage just kind of makes it want to kind of dive. So if right. you put a 50 millimeter stem on in there, which is still pretty short for a cross country bike, I think it would kind of uh, slow the handling just a touch and make it a little bit less twitchy feeling. So Marin says that this thing could be an entry level cross country bike. Yeah, I mean, for the price you get a lot, you get something that's actually race ready. Not all the parts are perfect. The bike itself isn't perfect, but it's pretty close if you're just trying to start racing. Okay, Beta MTB Addery, let me read through this thing. Uh, we love doing these field tests. They're a hell of a lot of work. Uh, we try to make useful, honest feedback about these bikes. Uh, consider subscribing to Beta MTB because you get early access to field test videos. Does that mean you guys need to edit them sooner as well? <laughs> and you also get bonus content. And someone wrote that the best, you get the best long form riding and mountain biking. Palmer probably wrote that. Link in the description below, it's half off. It's only 24 bucks a year right now. I can almost afford that, seven cents a day. Uh, and if you can't afford it, don't worry because we're going to be putting these videos on YouTube daily as per usual. Uh, link in the description below. Make sure to like and subscribe and then do a call out. Uh, yeah, okay, let's do this. As we've mentioned already over the last few minutes, this is definitely a more cross-country oriented bike. But to be fair, Marin, in their description, they also say that it's ready for some light trail action. Their words, not mine. Kaz, on the descents, how does this thing feel? Yep, I mean, it does feel on the sharp end of things, you know, that quicker handling. Um, you also have no dropper post, which we should mm -hmm. mention. That's something that anybody that purchases this bike should add some money in their budget for dropper post. I mean, right. even on an XC race, just even if you could only drop at 100 mils, that's going to make a difference. So, Especially with the, the angles that these bikes are using now, that seat is right where you don't want it, right? Yeah, exactly. So if you want to expand its capabilities, a dropper post is a must have. So again, it's going to bump the price up a little bit, but you know, we stopped and dropped the, um, lowered the post for the more technical descents mm -hmm. and it does I'd say moderate, you know, it's not, it's not gonna you know, set the world on fire with its descending capabilities. You just have to keep your expectations in check, you know, but yeah. it still can poke its way down some pretty technical stuff. I mean, the trails we've been riding are really unforgiving. Um, and this bike you know, lets you get away with some stuff So you know, there are limits, but I think on 
any cross country race course, it's gonna be just fine. Alicia, what about yourself? I know you've ridden some cross country bikes in the past. Does this thing feel more modern? And mm -hmm. is it modern enough that, I mean, Kaz mentioned it, some of these trails are freaking rowdy out there, like super rocky, super unforgiving. Do you feel comfortable on this bike? Let's yeah. just pretend the seat is down for a minute. Pretending the seat is down, yeah, I do feel comfortable. The first ride I took on this bike, I remembered how I rode back in the day on a bike with a 69 degree head angle and the seat way up and was committed to keeping the seat up. It didn't go super well. So subsequent laps were much better with the seat down and it does all right for what it is. Let's talk about how this bike rides when you're not scared to death on some of this super rocky stuff, Kaz. It's on flowy trails. I know you found a couple out there. What's the Marin team Marin one like? Yeah, I mean, I think that's my favorite kind of terrain on it. You know, something flowy with some dips and dives, rolling terrain. It really makes you want to go fast. Right. Alicia, what about yourself? This thing must be way more fun on less demanding terrain, mm -hmm. I would imagine, right? Yeah, I think it's really cool just to take out into maybe your local trail system or a little lunch lap. Nothing too crazy, like don't take it on an all mountain epic, whatever that might mean for you but just cruising around on fun trails, the snappiness is super fun. Up next, we're gonna talk about components and we've already mentioned that the bike doesn't come with the dropper post. I'm gonna give Marin a pass on this one though because it is an entry level cross country bike. So maybe it doesn't need one. If you want one, you put it on, but let's start at the front of the bike Kaz where there's a RockShox Judy fork. I turned that rebound adjuster, what, what's going on? Yeah, I mean, the Judy's very basic. It only has open or fully locked out, just two positions. And then, like you said, the rebound, there's just not really a range of adjustment. It's pretty uh, coarse adjustments, I'd say. So you're not gonna get the fine, fine tuning that you would get on a higher end fork. I think you could start off with this and it's gonna get the job done, but it is something you could upgrade in the future. And I think the nice thing about the Marin is the frame is worthy of upgrading. Like it's yeah. okay to hang nicer parts on it as you decide if you're into the sport or get more into racing, that type of thing. Both of you guys mentioned the brakes. Shimano Altis, what did you think? I was okay with the brakes. I can't say I like them or dislike them. I think for what the bike is, like a budget entry-level hardtail, they're pretty all right. They do the job of slowing you down for the most part. They don't seem to fail. They don't seem to fade. My thing about the brakes is I just don't think the bike would benefit much from more powerful brakes because the tires are gonna hold you back before the brakes do. The tires aren't that grippy. And if you have brake power and you're just getting out immediately, it won't do you much good. Yeah, that definitely makes sense. But let's end the component check with a high note here. Kaz, 12-speed Dior drivetrain, do you have any complaints? Zero complaints about right. that. I mean, it's great to see that on this bike. And then that means if you did, again, if you wanted to upgrade things in the future, which Dior doesn't really need upgrading, but if you wanted to put a lighter cassette on there, you don't need any extra parts. It's gonna be compatible with the micro spline free hub body. Well, we're still on components. We didn't mention the flat mount brake. Oh yeah. So that's kind of strange. You know, the, it's a thing you see with some cross country bikes, but it just means there's not as many options um, if you wanted to switch brakes out or if you want to go to even a different rotor size. So it's just a little bit more of an inconvenience than a performance benefit. Yeah, to be fair, you can get an adapter to put on a normal brake caliper. But the other thing is, when it's really hard to adjust the position of the caliper with this flat mount crap. Yeah. Like you have to turn the bike upside down and use a little short little four mil. Yeah, it's just annoying. and. Flat mount doesn't really belong on a mountain bike. We always do timed testing at these things, but we should also mention that these bikes don't have control tires. They're completely stock. So sort of take this with a grain of salt. Let's start with climbing times. How did this thing do? The Marin won the climb pretty predictably. Makes sense. Um, it was four seconds ahead of the commensal. So on a two minute climb, just over two minutes, that's pretty significant. Did it feel faster on the trail too? Yeah, it feels so zippy. It's really nice the way, I mean, the bike is so stripped down to the essentials that you just put power into the pedals and it moves you forward. Alicia, what about on the way back down, where did the Marin place? It was second place. I was a little surprised by it. It was second place, four seconds back from the salsa. Question for you. Yes. Where was the seat post? Where was the seat at when it went second fastest? The seat was as far down as it could go which means I did take extra time at the top of the descent to lower the seat. We're also combining our times to figure out how these bikes feel overall. Speaking of that, how did the Marin do? The Marin actually placed first overall. I think it definitely had an advantage on the climb and wasn't really held back on the descent. This is the value bike field test. And that means we're gonna talk about value. Kaz, what is the story with this thing? I think this one does qualify as a good value. For $1,600, you're getting a full Dior drivetrain. Alicia, if you had an extra $1,000 to spend, you can get the Team Marin 2 dropper post, Fox 34, better brakes. 
Would you do that? Is that would that be like a noticeable upgrade on the trail? It would definitely be noticeable. Mainly, I mean, the better fork does make a difference, and the dropper post makes, as we've said before, a huge difference. Twenty-six hundred dollars for a fully race-ready bike with a good fork and a dropper post and good brakes is still really good value. I don't have one that I clearly recommend over the other. It depends on your intentions. I think the Team Marin One is amazing to get into cross-country racing. But if you're a little more serious, the Marin Team Marin 2 may be the way to go. That brings us to pros and cons. Let's talk to Mr. Positive over here. Kaz, take it away. Tell me what you like. Give me a few things. Yeah, I think they really nailed it with the geometry. It really has that modern XC feel. So you can do some racing, but you can do some lighter duty trail rides and be right at home. That's the biggest positive for me. I think also the frame itself, it's a, it's a nice frame worthy of hanging even nicer parts on it as time goes on. I think there are a few negatives to talk about here. The biggest one that is objectively negative is just that the fork and brakes do hold it back a little bit, along with the tires, depending on what you're trying to use it for. And then the other one, which is sort of a pro and sort of a con, is it's just very purpose oriented. And so if you're buying it as an all around hardtail, it's not gonna be the one to put a long travel fork on and try to take to the bike park or whatever you're gonna do on that hardtail. This one is the one you wanna do cross country rides with. Speaking of doing cross-country rides, Kaz, who should consider this bike? I think you're gonna tell me somebody who does cross-country rides. I mean, that's it. Yeah, right? we kind of talked about it. Perfect for somebody that may be a beginner racer. I think it makes a lot of sense. You know, when I was a high school cross-country racer, this bike would have been right up my alley. I kind of had some little flashbacks riding this thing around, just remembering that. It doesn't have to be a high schooler. It could be anybody that just wants to try some cross-country racing without dropping thousands and thousands of dollars. Mm -hmm. um, and it's gonna be good for that. Alicia, do you agree with Kaz? I 100% agree. It's a little nostalgic for me because that's how I started mountain biking, high school cross country racing, and I wish I had this bike back then. All right, that is it for the Marin Team Marin One. Stay tuned for more videos from the Value Bike Field Test in Tucson, Arizona.